Here are some modifications to the R26 recorder and to the Rode pistol grip for rifle microphone. First of all, the R26. And the problem is not with the recorder itself, but the fact that it requires some form of wind shielding. And the Rycote Mini Windjammer is a fantastic piece of kit for this. The only problem is that the only method of holding it onto the recorder is the elasticated hem to the shield itself. And of course the recorder is completely parallel sided and fairly smooth. And within a few moments you just got to knock the thing and it will fall off. Does a great job as far as wind noise is concerned, but not very secure. So what I decided to do was to hold the thing on with a couple of elasticated loops and found that I could modify the R26 body to put on some flanges that would then captivate those uh, loops of elastic. And this is the result. The front and rear parts of the R26 body casing are held on by a set of screws. Uh, they are very small. In fact, they are M2 by 0.25, which is a very, very fine thread. I'd hope to replace these screws with longer ones that would go through the flanges and would be of the correct size and pitch. However, it turns out that this is a very uncommon thread pitch. Consequently, I decided, since the device was out of warranty, to just tap the holes through for the four screws that I'd removed uh, to M2.5 with a standard pitch and uh, that's absolutely fine. So these flanges are rather crude as you can see, uh, little aluminium plates and uh, some pillars behind them. Obviously an ideal solution would be to make those out of single part plastic mouldings. The wind jam is modified by simply using some bias binding to create tunnels for what uh, is now a single loop of 3mm shock cord elastic which is uh, sewn into a loop and that's uh, free at the sides. I put some tabs on there to help pull these things into and out of the uh, flange arrangement and you can see how it's actually attached somewhat clumsily here. And once it's on it's fairly secure. It takes a few moments to bring the hem of the wind jammer around the body of the unit, but while you're doing this, it's captivated by the shock cord and it's not going to go anywhere, even if uh, you're in a gale somewhere. The next modification is just simply a shorting plug that goes into one of the XLR microphone inputs. This shouldn't really be necessary, but the problem is that if you want to record with the internal microphones as well as the analog inputs as it calls it, the XLR inputs, you can only do that in four channel mode. There is no three channel mode. So if you want to use the internal stereo pair for general ambience, but then use a single spot microphone on the XLR inputs, there is no such thing as a three channel mode here. You've got one, two, four, six. So you end up using four channel mode, uh, which means that your spot microphone ends up on one side of the uh, stereo pair associated with the XLR inputs. Now, Roland have implemented mono headphone monitoring uh, for when you're recording. So actually your spot microphone appears centrally in the headphones. But of course, when you come to play this back, uh, that one channel is just played back as the left of a stereo pair. That's fine, except that when you've been recording, you only have a single control that uh, varies the gain of both left and right channels. And therefore, uh, you'll find there's an awful lot of noise on the right channel if you leave that XLR socket unterminated, which can be a bit of a nuisance when you're trying to listen to it back. Obviously, the best thing would be for Roland to implement mono headphone monitoring on playback as well as record. The shorting plug simply has pins 2 and 3 shorted together. Pin 1, the earth pin, goes to the body of the connector as well. And then it's just back filled with hot melt glue. So we come now to the Rode pistol grip. Now this is just, just an experiment really. The pistol grip comes with a rubber compliant microphone holder element. 
In fact, it comes with two to deal with two different microphone diameters. And I was wondering whether any benefit would come from using the Ryko Lyre system. I happen to have a couple of Lyres and its associated clip as part of an experiment to see if this would work in a Sennheiser wind basket. Now, that particular experiment wasn't successful, but I got this spare pair of Lyres and mic clips, so I thought, OK, let's replace the rubber mic holder with these Lyres. So this is the result. I can't immediately say this is any better or worse. The frontal of the two liars compresses down more than the rear because of the asymmetric load on them, which is a short shotgun, it's a Rode NTG1, and its associated wind muff. Cable strain relief, of course, is the existing clip that's built into the Rode pistol grip. I'll have to do some more experiments with this to see if it's of any real benefit compared to the cylindrical rubber element. I suspect at the end of the day the liars won't be much more effective than the original rubber suspension and consequently it may be better to return to that because it's a simpler and probably more rugged arrangement and less likely to tangle up cables than the liars.